Um, I wanted to begin by thanking the people at Mindstream and the TED conference for inviting me to speak. It's a tremendous, tremendous honor for me to talk, and especially the kids. I had the greatest night last night with the amazing students at Mindstream. I, I had so much fun. Thank you so much. I'm a little bit different. Today I'm going to talk to you about happiness. Um, I had a brutal breakdown at the age of 36, which I share with the world. I want to help people learn how to be happier and realize that we don't have to be as stressed out and unhappy in America. Um, I truly believe that the key is self-love. I have a hat that I wear all the time and it says self-love on the top. We need to realize that it's only when we start to be okay with who we are simply because we were born, simply because of who we are and what we do, that we can really relax and enjoy our life. And that's one of the main lessons I learned from my breakdown. For me, it's perfect to be speaking to you here at Mindstream because I think they really get it. What I've seen is they understand it's not good enough just to teach the students there to eat less and to exercise more. We really, if we want to help people to live a better and happier life, we need to get to the real wounds that are in their heart. And that affects the way that we think. I, as I said, I'm not a doctor, a psychologist, I'm not an academic, I live the struggle. I lived really the American dream. I was born in Needham, Massachusetts. I wasn't raped, nothing bad happened to me, but I really made myself crazy. If I didn't get straight A's growing up, and I bet there's a ton of people like me in the audience, I was unhappy. An A minus and I couldn't sleep. Um, so I went through school and I had tremendous low self-esteem. Uh, I was extremely nervous around women. I had acne because I was so stressed out. When I was nine, I was sent away to overnight camp and I had a horrific experience with um, homesickness. All of this followed me to Tufts University. And listen, if you are someone who needs to get straight A's, Tufts is tough. They say in Boston, if you can't get into Harvard, you go to Tufts. Uh, the toughest thing I ever did was graduate, not because I'm not smart. I couldn't even stay uh, at school a single night. I was traveling home to sleep with my mom every single night. I was a real mama's boy. In fact, in high school, I was so stressed out. Who likes the guiding light? Anybody remember the guiding light? I came home every day with my mom. She made me a grilled cheese, and we watched the guiding light so that I could relax. That was my drug of choice. But when I got to college, all of a sudden I was living on my own. I was stressed out of my mind about the grades and I drove home every day. Now that I talk on college campuses, you know, 65% of college students are homesick. 44% uh, suffer from depression and 11% of college freshmen have suicidal tendencies but only and suicidal thoughts, but only 15% get help because of the stigma. And that's what I really want to rid uh, America of is the stigma. I freely say I had a nervous breakdown. I freely say I take antidepressants. I want you to know it's unbelievable how many people I speak to who say, Todd, I had a breakdown. Todd, I take antidepressants, but nobody's sharing it. And so we've got these wonderful kids out there and in other high schools cutting themselves and even the suicide rates going up because they think, my God, nobody else feels the way I did or I do. There is no uh, future for me. Uh, I'm always going to be depressed. I'm always going to be unhappy. And kids, believe me, it's not true. You just need to start to love yourself. After I graduated uh, Tufts, I went into the family business. By anyone's standard, I was a success. Uh, we sold our company in uh, 2005 for more money than I could ever dream of, but that's when I had my breakdown. And it had to do with um, me uh, fracturing my feet. I'd become addicted to exercise, and then my wife and I lost a pregnancy. And I had to take a good hard look at myself and say, this is insane. Todd, you got the most beautiful, wonderful wife, the greatest son, you've got all the money in the world, you've got your health, and for two days you wanted to kill yourself. What's going on here? And as I looked around, I wasn't the only one. More and more people I spoke to were saying, I'm not happy, I'm stressed out of my mind, I take antidepressants. And if we really look at America, you know, from my perspective, we're way, way out of whack. And I was blessed because my wife and her family and everyone who visits from Venezuela, they're the happiest people in the world. They don't live like we do. And I began to realize, I think that the American dream has been hijacked. We don't understand the purpose of the American dream and it's making us all crazy and sick and I want to encourage you to start a revolution with me where we understand the American dream was about people coming from England and other countries because they couldn't worship uh, or they, they, with my grandpa, he was escaping Hitler. And he came in Ruby Patkin in Watertown, Massachusetts. He worked, they say, seven days a week. He got to the office at four in the morning. He uh, left at one in the afternoon and if you asked Ruby, 
I believe he'd say, the reason I work so hard and I only look at the things I do that are wrong. I don't look at what I do right because then I'll take a break. I just look at what I do wrong so I can continue to do better. But I'm willing to do it because I want to put food on my table and I want my kids to be happier than me and their kids to be happier, but we're less happy. There are more and more studies coming out that we are less happy today in America than our parents were 20 years ago. This is insane. So uh, as I looked at it more and more and I understood in my own life, all we do now is look at what we do wrong. We learned from our parents so that my dad learned from his dad, just look at what you do wrong. That's what Ruby did. I learned from my father, just look at what I do wrong. All of us do 100 things more right than wrong. If you look at the one thing you do wrong, you do 100 things right for every one thing you do wrong. But what do we look at, what we do wrong? Who in the audience tells themselves every day or every week how stupid you are, how dumb you are, you should have done this differently? Who always tries to be perfect? You can't be perfect. You're a human being, so you're fallible. If you're fallible, you make mistakes. And I'm talking fast because we all have a time limit here. But that's the problem here. You're human, so you're fallible, so you're going to make mistakes. But it's like we all have glasses. Like, as we got older, we had contact lenses put on our eyes that only allow us to look at what we do wrong. Let me ask you, if you're only looking at what you do wrong and improving, will you be more successful? Yes! Will you be happy? Of course not. You're going to feel awful about yourself and then you're not going to live. Because if you're always feeling small and bad about yourself, are you going to change jobs if you're unhappy? Are you going to try a new hobby that you'd love to do? Of course not. And it starts really, really young. You know, I... Um, often go out and I talk to kids, and I did an experiment. I took 50 kids between the age of 10 and 15, and I said, we're going to play a game. You're going to have a magic wand. You can choose to be A, or you can choose to be B. A, you get, this is a person who started out with no money. Today, they have a billion dollars. They have a billion dollars, but they're also going to tell you they made the wrong choice in life because they were never that happy. They were always stressed out. They had been divorced twice. They never spent time with their kids. They don't have a lot of friends. They had anxiety. They had depression. But yeah, they have a billion dollars. Or you can choose B, the person who will tell you he made the right choice. He chose the road less traveled. He's the gym teacher. He's the a uh, varsity basketball coach in his school, and he's so happy because he's got all these kids who came through the school who love him and who he loves. And he didn't have stress, and he didn't have depression. All of these kids, who would you rather be? What do you think the kids said? Duh, I want the billion dollars. But even worse, I then went out and I started talking to parents. What do you think most parents say? Just as many parents say, I want my kid to be the success. Hey, I had depression, I had anxiety, that's America, big deal, that's what it's all about. Where did happiness lose its, its way? I go to high schools now and I plead with parents, set a goal to have happy kids as well as successful kids. Isn't that the purpose of life? Again, that's why our, the immigrants who work so hard, they wanted us to be happy. Let's talk about another aspect of the American dream. The second thing people say to me when I say, tell me about the American dream, they say, every generation has to beat the generation before it. That's insane. Why don't we just ruin all of our kids? My grandfather came over to America with nothing. He built an, one of the largest car dealerships in Boston. Then my dad turned it into a $100 million company, and hopefully I've done some good stuff. Should I put that kind of pressure on my son? Look at an analogy if you're a sports fan. It's real easy if the, your team is like Indianapolis this year, taking a little shot at them, a Patriots fan. They're going to be 0-16. It's going to be real easy to come back. What, in 16 years, if every year they beat the year before, they're going to be 16-0. and 0. How can you beat that? So we're putting tremendous pressure. Why do people talk about being perfectionists all the time? To me, it's a fail-safe. This is how sick this is. It's just like a pot. If you're boiling water for, for tea, and it, all of a sudden, as it gets hotter, it has to blow off the top. Again, listen to me. So many of us, when I speak to them, they say, my biggest problem is I feel like I have to be a perfectionist. Well, of course. You've got glasses on. Anytime you see yourself doing a million things right and one thing wrong, you have to be miserable because you have to be perfect. How can you solve that if you have glasses that whenever you see something that's bad, it's going to make you feel awful? Either we've got to come up with a scientist who makes us perfect human beings, but again, I don't think we can do that. The only other way is for people to become perfect. And if people 
uh, you know, are constantly striving for, for perfection, you're always going to fail. You're always going to feel bad about yourself. So what I want people to realize is somehow, from my grandpa Ruby to my generation, we've lost the idea of the American dream, which is to work hard, to improve, so that we can live the good life. And I learned it. The greatest thing that ever happened to me was my breakdown. I, people say to me, Todd, how can I be like you? I say, have a breakdown. Because you'll get to the point where you'll say, this is insane. What am I doing to myself? I'm torturing myself. And the other thing is we need to share. Most people don't share. I, I talk to people, they all tell me, Todd, I take antidepressants. Todd, I've had a nervous breakdown. Todd, I've had anxiety attacks. But we don't talk about it. So we all think everybody else is happy and we're the only people that are unhappy. So that's really my mission in life. What's the answer? The answer is to start with ourselves. Self-love. Just love yourself because you were born. Just love yourself because you're trying to do the best you possibly can. You don't have to be perfect. If you give a great speech and you make one mistake, don't focus on the, the one mistake. Please. Um, and with kids, any one of us at any time can look to the left. I don't care if you're President Obama or the poorest person in the world and feel so awful about themselves. I can do it right now. Or I can look to the right and convince myself I'm the greatest human being, I do the greatest things. Similarly, we can feel bad about all the things we don't have if we want to compare ourselves to the Donald Trumps of the world. Or we can look to the right and look at all the people in Africa and India and see just what we have. So overall, my message today is please, we live in the greatest country in the world since the beginning of time, that our democracy, our capitalism. But we're all unhappy and stressed out. We really need to take a good hard look at how we've hijacked the American dream, work together, through self-love to make all of ourselves a lot happier. Thank you very much.